Hey everybody, what's up? With today's video, I'm going to start a series of model car reviews with a special focus on movie and TV show cars. What better way to start with the iconic 1969 Dodge Charger RT General Lee of the Dukes of Hazard TV show? Let's start by telling you a little bit about the history of the car, its technical specifications, then we'll go ahead and take an in-depth look of the exterior, engine bay, undercarriage, as well as the interior. And since we're so lucky to have two seemingly identical General Lees here today, we'll also compare the two and check whether or not they are identical twins. The second generation Dodge Charger was launched in 1968 and only lasted until 1970. Nevertheless, to this date it is still a very famous and highly desirable American muscle car. Partly because muscle cars of the 1960s and 70s in general have always been symbols of the American way of life, and also because the second generation Dodge Charger has been the star of several TV shows and movies, such as Bullet, The Dukes of Hazard, obviously, and more recently the Fast and the Furious franchise. It came with a plethora of engines, from the 3.7 liter inline six cylinder all the way to the 7.2 liter V8. The 1969 model showcased in the Dukes of Hazard had the 380 horsepower 383 4 barrel 6.3 liter V8. These model cars here were made by ERTL. Of course, they don't have functioning engines, but we'll have a look under the hood in just a moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of the car. For starters, it has the orange paint, just as in the movie or in the show. Then we have here the this black push bar, which appears to be like just like in the show. You can clearly here see the, the little RT logo for road and track. Let me just zoom in. However, it's missing the charger logo. If we go over to the side. We can see the yellow daytime running lights. The vector, American Racing Vectors wheels, we have the 0101 on the doors, and nice feature, the doors are welded shut, just as in the sewers, you cannot open them, we have the general lead on the roof, as well as the confederate flag, in the back, we have the, the red running light, And on the back here, we have the longitudinal tail lights, just as in the 96 model year, the CNH320 Hazard County license plate. Let me just zoom in. The dual exhaust, the RT logo, the lock to put in the key. And on the left side, there's some lights. You can see the fuel fuel filler cap, it says fuel on it. I don't know if you can actually see it. The wheels, of course. A nice little feature here. You can see the left rear view mirror. And this one only has one on the left side. Just as in the show, you can see on the right side there is no mirror. So I also just would like to show you how the wheels, obviously you saw that they turn as such, front and back, but they're also turning sideways, and they are. So I'm looking at this, connected to the steering wheel, as you can see.
So, so far we've seen the parts that, or their details that actually are like in the show, but there are many things or several things that are not quite as accurate as it should be. As I mentioned, there's the charger, charger logo missing here. And the weird thing is, I, d I haven't seen all of the episodes of the Dukes of Hazard, but I never saw one with a license plate or a license plate holder in the front. So far, as far as I know, no, as far as I know, there was only the back one. So putting up this one is probably inaccurate. Another interesting feature are these chrome lines, or intended to be chrome lines, which are just painted on, which were not in the movie or in the series. It was just all orange. And you can see here when you get up close, the, the Chrysler Pentastar, lo Pentastar logo, which we have on this model. And also on the second model I have here, which I'm going to take a look on later but just to compare this interesting feature is on the right front fender as well but not on the left fender neither on this one nor on the first one and interestingly it wasn't even on any of the, the of the chargers in the TV show anyway so these lines here, which are intended to be chrome lines, I suppose, and the ones in the back were not on the TV show car. If we take a close look at the roof, we can see that the general lead decal here goes all the way back until about the middle of the C pillar of the car. If you look at it in the, sh in the TV show, however, it only goes about until here, the beginning of the C pillar. But I guess they just wanted to make more visible or just big enough for people to read from further away. Also here, I'm not sure if this is consistent throughout the whole show. There would be a checkered flag, a little checkered flag and a little confederate flag just on the back, just behind the, the back window, which is nowhere to be seen on this one. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Other than that, the car is pretty accurate to show standards. We could argue that the, the rims are black and chrome instead of being just alloy. alloy. I don't think there are chrome. They have a chrome cover in the, in the show. Most of the car is nicely finished. I mean, for starters, it's it's metal. It's a really nice finish between the hood here, shut lines between the hood and the fenders. Get up a little bit. Look at it from the side. So it's a nice match. Even here, although you cannot open the doors. There are separate parts. It's okay. It's pretty nice and on the right side as well. The added parts like the push bar and the bumper here are plastic, are chrome plastic, and black plastic of course, and the, and the windshield wipers are plastic as well. They could be they could be of better quality, but then I think it's all down to the price of the car. At least they there. So let's take a look under the hood. So as far as I know, the car featured the V8 engine. Well, the one featured in here is pretty basic. You see the engine block, which is all red. Radiator, 
the hose going into the engine, carburetor, battery, which I'm sure more expensive models would be better made, much better made. But for the rest of it, you can see the engine bay. If you look into the engine bay, you can see the different shapes and especially also under the hood, which is where they try to replicate the original shape of the hood. If we take a close look at the back, we would expect it. Well, we would expect the trunk to be to be able to open, but this one is like apparently just one piece. You can see the lines here where it should should open, but it just appears like it, but it doesn't actually open. So that's really sad. Although there's a lock here. Let me just, it just would be nice to be able to open it. So let's go ahead and take a look underneath the car. Just put it on the roof. And at first sight you can see that there's everything there. You can see how the push bar is mounted here with those two screws. You can see the engine. So this is where the transmission supposed to be which is if you get a close look at it pretty much just the upper part of it that is painted gray on top of just on top of the the engine block so that's not the best quality you could get but once again it comes down to the price tires are nice with profile on it however they do not have any inscription on the outer side of the tire wall so they don't say anything about the the make and the specifications of the tires the exhaust pipes coming out of the engine both sides obviously it's a V8 and we get the details on the make the RTL over here all the way back to the mufflers And also, you can clearly see how it's all bolted together, how the chassis is bolted to the rest of the car. There's one screw here, well, two screws in the back, two in the middle, one on either side. Then the two here in the front, which also hold the push, push bar. And the one here, I don't know if you can like, turn it over. Seat, one here in the front. That's about it. So surprisingly, as much as they put the effort into painting on chrome lines around the wheel archers on both sides and in front and in the back and in the front, they didn't put one on here on the C pillar between the back window just the back of the car it did have one on on the show like on the car and the, the show the 69 charger but there's no one here I mean they could at least have painted it they did a nice job putting on those fake chrome lines around the window just around the, the windows here on this a pillar and then also around the windshield 
comes in this matte, this pearl gray color. Also around the back window. So since I have two of these cars, I thought it would be a perfect occasion to compare the two. I bought this one first a couple of years ago, stored it away and forgot about it and was given this one recently. So let's just put them together. We can clearly say, see here the front that this one has the Confederate flag on the license plate holder just a sticker on it whereas this one technically has to hold it it's the same but there's no flag on it same story for the logos on the grill where the charger RT is supposed to be as I mentioned before there, there is the RT logo here but there's no logo on this car on the grill if we look at the back of the car, it tells pretty much the same story. We have the two stickers, the RT sticker and the license plate, Hazard County license plate. On this car, which are missing on the right car. So technically, everything is the same. It's just the stickers that are missing, that are missing. Well, at least on this comparison part, I just wanted to show you that just the fit and finish of the one that has less stickers is not as good as the one that has all the stickers. You can see this one. With This is the one with the license plate in the back and the RT logo and the RT logo in the front. You can see the hood is nicely made. Virtually no gaps, it closes nicely, just as the real car. But if we go over to the second car, you can instantly notice that the hood doesn't really f close that nicely. It closes nicely in the front, but then there's this huge gap in the, in the back near the windscreen. Same story on the other side. Also, Gonna take this over here. Turn off the light. If you look at the front end of the hood, where it finishes nicely on the right side of the car, nice con connection to the fender. If you go over to the left side, it appears to be longer on the left side of the hood than on the right side. Hmm, which doesn't really nice look nicely. Doesn't really look nice. Even underneath the hood, where I showed you before, how they tried to copy the shape of the hood inside, and you can see it's all nicely painted. If you compare it to this one, I'm not sure it shows clearly on the video, but the paint coat just doesn't seem to be, doesn't appear to be as thick as in the first car. And then if we if we compare the, with the, the undercarriage of the cars, both cars, they are identical. Color-wise, technical-wise, they have, they do have some different inscriptions on it, trademark logos and whatever numbers they choose to put, put on but they are the same car so it's a shame this one isn't as nicely made as the first one I mean 
you can always add on some stickers, make, make them yourself or buy them somewhere. But this part, this hood is metal, it's painted, the paint fits the rest of the car, but it's not just not as nicely finished as the first one. This one really doesn't match, and if you look, look at the hood on the side, yeah, there's a substantial gap. It's strange, it's just like they didn't really care as much when they made this one as opposed to when they made the first one. Anyway, let's take a look inside. Hey guys, as you can see I've had a little help from my friend Screwdriver and I've disassembled the car, like the, one of the cars. And the chassis, you can see the chassis. And you can see the rest of the car. And I did this so I could get a close look of the interior. So first of all you can see that it has the beige interior and the seats just as in the, in, in the show. This roll cage is black. In well, some episodes in the show it's black and some it's, uh, it's more beige, like wrapped in beige. I would say that's okay. However, there is no diagonal bar yeah, at all. That's just like the frame, but for more stability in, in case of crash, in the event of crash, they put in a diagonal bar as well in the show, which is nowhere to be seen in here. Second of all, where are the back seats? So I suppose that this part here in the back is supposed to be, um, are supposed to be the seat belts. No, I could be mistaken. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm trying to zoom in. Yeah. But clearly, the back seats are missing. They're nice front seats with the same kind of shape and stitching as in the show. You can see this is where the gearbox would be. Transmission shaft going back, all the way back to the rear wheels, but no back seat. Up front, the pedals, steering wheel, which is accurate. There's no logo in the center of the steering wheel. But it's a three spoke with silver spokes. Over here we have the pedals. Let's be let me just get this up into the light. Yeah. Gas pedal, brake pedal, clutch pedal, or should I say emergency brake pedal. So if we take a close look at the gear lever, this is just the one thing that really struck me because the gear lever of the show, of the car in the show, doesn't have this L shape and it comes straight out of the out of the gearbox and the housing. There's no no black additional housing like you would see it here. Just try and zoom in, focus on it. Yeah, that's certainly not accurate. Now, if we look into the car, we can take a close look at the doors. Let me just turn that one here. Which surprisingly, it's really nice made with lots of details of pockets. Of course, it has this beige color with the chrome window lever. And also, this is how we can see how they shut the door. Of course, they wouldn't weld it in this one, they just put black plastic on it which shuts the mechanism since I had to unbolt this one which is here 
I can now open the door. Voila. So it is possible to disassemble the car, take this, yeah, this black element out of it, and then have a generally where you can open the door, but of course that wouldn't be accurate to the show. So I'm gonna put this in again. All right, guys. As you can see, I just took the doors out so you could get a, so we could get a close look at the dashboard. It appears that the car is now almost completely disassembled. Let me get a really good look at the dashboard. You can clearly see the beige dashboard with all the buttons and the radio. Well, not actually a radio, but just it does have the shape of it. And surprisingly, the dials are all contoured in silver paint and a black underneath. So they did a really good job on that. So up here we can see the inner rear view mirror and also the sun shades, which is something I didn't even I didn't even notice when the car was assembled. Let's take a close look at the door. The nice thing of it is that as mentioned before it has everything. It has here on the left door, the rear view mirror, the orange color outside, it has the door lock, it has the door handle, the chrome one. It even has the traditional, the specific, the characteristic shapes of the charger door. On the inner side Beige finish, also with the chrome elements like the the window, the window uh, lever. Little plastic window on top. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, let's take a last look at it all taken apart before I put it back together and then we can have a look at the packaging. So let's go ahead and have a look at the package. This is the one like the this is the one from the card that has all the stickers on it. So this is the older one. Joyride package. And weirdly, the car you can see here on the left is clearly a model car as well, but appears to be a different one than the one that is actually in this box. And it appears to be much well, well much less well built than the one that is in here. Anyway, on top of it, the names, of course, we have here the Hazard, the, the, the Duke family, the Duke brothers, Daisy Duke on top of the car, Boss, Hawk, Roscoe, and the cousins. The side of it again, with that less well built car. On the back of it, we have a little description of the show and what's inside in English and in French. Same story on that side. The, and the usual warning, warning signs and things. We can see that it's, it is an official Dodge licensed product. This is the box of the second car, the one that has less stickers on it and where the hood is less well made. And weirdly here, we instantly see that this is the actual car that is in the box, it's depicted on here. The Duke Cousins, Luke, D 
Duke, Daisy Duke, Bo Duke. Same story on top of it. And on the side, this one also comes in English and French descriptions. And underneath it comes with just about the same warning signs as the first box. You can see here, this one is also licensed by Dodge. Thanks so much for watching the in-depth review of the 1969 Dodge Charger RT General Lee. Please feel free to comment, like, share and subscribe, as well as visit my Facebook page and my blog on motorscotty.com. There is a lot more to come, there is also a lot more to improve. So just feel free to tell what you like and what you didn't like. Stay tuned, until next time.